welcome to another episode of Hello Tetsu. I am your host Alobo, a second semester student from the Mass Communication Department. Thrilled to be here again, thrilled to be your host. I hope you're all doing well, even if you're not, do well. <laughs> I'm here with a very special guest today who is a talented student who published her second edition of a um, book. And yeah, I guess this episode I don't want to give a spoiler regarding this episode because it is not scripted at all and I'm looking forward to this conversation. I'm allowing the guest to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Tara Leo Bega as Izung. I am currently in fourth semester taking linguistics as my honors paper. I am really excited to be here and I hope you guys have fun throughout. Thank you, uh, Tara Lee, for being here with us today. Like, I'm really, in I'm really invested and really curious about you and your department. So, I hope you will be able to spill as much this as possible. <laughs> no, cause like many of the authors that, that I know that I uh, that I've come across, they're like mostly from the literature background. Yeah, yes, the background, yes. the English honors or like the mm. literature, but. It's really surprising because when I heard about your department linguistic, I was like, is it possible? What kind of course is available in linguistic and how did you end up taking up linguistic as your honors? I will start with your last question. How did I end up, end up taking linguistics? Um, when I was in class 8, my best friend, her sister was taking masters in linguistics. Mm -hmm. So she would bring to class some question papers that her sister appeared and then we will have fun solving those although obviously all our answers were wrong we really had fun um, marking all the answers or finding looking for answers and i kind of my interest kind of grew from there and once um, when i was in class 11 i uh, learned that we can take linguistics as bachelor's degree mm -hmm. And I looked around, and Dejo was the only college that provided linguistics in Nakhlin. So yeah, that's how I ended up taking linguistics. Do you do you think uh, linguistic is a very interesting subject, or like, um, how, how would you suggest? Like, to whom, to which peers would you suggest to take up linguistic? Um, that is an interesting question. Obviously, I personally think linguistic is really interesting because it is very fun to learn. It's not just about the grammar. Mm -hmm. And one, um, one mistake that everyone makes when it comes to linguistics is they mistake it for English or mm -hmm. literature. Mm -hmm. Everyone is like, linguistics is just like ling English or literature, but okay, okay. it's more than English, <laughs> more than literature. Actually, it's nothing like literature at all. Uh. It's very scientific. Obviously, obviously, the definition of linguistics is the scientific study of human language. So, we deal with uh, stuff very scientifically. There are some things that are kind of philosophical, I should say. But yeah, more or less, everything is really scientific because you learn about your articulatory system what kind of articulatory organs you're using to produce the sounds the different sounds you oh. make okay. so everything is just tuk, tuk, tuk. and the thing is it's a fake linguistic is everything is fake f-a-c-t okay. so you cannot write long answers like english or literature you cannot make up anything so yeah <laughs> that is interesting it is very interesting i thought linguistic it has to do with languages and i thought like that's where like linguistic oh money bilingual oh yeah yeah that is also one thing <laughs> yeah everyone thinks that we learn languages <laughs> but it's not that it's not we study languages, we oh. don't learn language. Oh. We study the difference, the differences in grammar, learning, stuff like learning. that. Yeah, okay, we study. Okay. And Interesting, because oh my god, all my <laughs> life has been a lie. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, there are very less students who are like in, their, in your department. Yeah, very less. The second semester, like the first year, there's just two of them. Just two of them. So, three toppers. But, eh. Uh, 
No, you know how this SGBA works. It's like just because there are two students doesn't mean both of them are doppers. If they if their SGBA is above seven, obviously they are doppers. If not, like really? yeah. Oh man, I wish like because from your pers like after hearing your perspective about what the linguistic subject is, it seems really interesting. It is, and I hope like more students can look out. Yeah, no, yeah. like do more research about linguistics and join yeah. your department. <laughs> and the thing is, the one funny thing is, everyone is curious about what we are going to do after we graduate, which yes. is actually very funny to me because we have like majority of the students are taking pole science. Mm -hmm. Their scope is to a beer exam, mm -hmm. and obviously linguistics students, even linguistics students, we can appear for those exams, but you cannot go do interview or you cannot uh, submit your resume do stuff we can do so it's like interesting yeah interesting <laughs> wait wait what <laughs> should i change my course <laughs> just recently even my uncle was saying uh, asking me to go back to both science or history because they want me to appear for our exam and i was like even if I change my mind and appear for exam, I am going to have to take coaching for that. Mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. if I take pole science, even if I take history, I am going to have to take coaching for that. Mm -hmm. So why not study something fun and study something I want to study right now? That's true, true. And yeah. You're here. Here you are. Yeah. Well. Uh, your vocabulary it's very good like I must say like your pronunciations and it's really good thank we, you and if I'm not mistaken the book you've started writing when you were 14 to 17 years he, old uh, I started writing when I was 12 years old oh, really? yeah and then actually collecting the poem started mm -hmm. when I was in four one when I was 14 years old yeah. so. so like uh, how's your like um, did you have any kind of guidance or was uh, English a, a language used mostly at home or? Um, no, there was no guidance whatsoever and I know people expect me to have really good, really expensive English but if you go through my writings, if you go through my book, you will see that all my writings are, I use simple English, simple words to convey messages and yeah there was no guidance whatsoever and I was not really good at English also I was good at it but not better than my beers or my classmates just good at it interesting well so your book afterward yeah. it also means epilogue yes 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 so and it is uh, dedicated to your sister mm -hmm. so like was it your elder sister the like how where do you stand in your family okay. the sibling line i have one brother and one sister and i am the youngest one at home really so, yes interesting interesting <laughs> and whoa <laughs> whoa because because you don't there, there's no vibe of a younger sibling younger really? sibling wait i thought i thought like you were dedicating this to your younger sister. Oh God, really? Yeah. Because at home, everyone is like, you're so spoiled, you're so spoiled. I guess... I'm, I'm going to take that as a compliment. No, really, I guess you have a professional side of you where you keep your childish at home and then bring the professional side of you at college. <laughs> Not by looks, okay, but then okay. like the aura that you give, the charisma, okay. your charisma, like the approach, it does not give the younger sibling vibe. It gives like a responsible lady vibe. I am ah? flattered. I am really flattered. <laughs> no, because it does. Like, okay, if you're you. watching this and you're a friend of Tara Lee, I'm sure you will like agree with me. <laughs> I hope you guys do. <laughs> Comment down below. <laughs> Especially SFG. <laughs> I, I don't okay. know what this stands for, but okay. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. So, uh, regarding your poem, like, mm -mm. is there any particular, like, uh, poem that you were really uh, connected to and you want to express it to your to the viewers and the listeners here today I um, I wouldn't say I write for people to get my message 
even the poems I send to my friends or yeah I don't expect them to understand it I don't have any expectations whatsoever I just write to express myself and it's nice when people tell you that they relate to it because you're like oh I, I was not writing for you but the fact that you can relate to what I went through and stuff is so beautiful mm. and so for me I have one poem in the book it's called bloodline that is very very personal because it talks about my family me growing up so yeah but it has nothing to do with conveying a certain message to people it's just me coming out and talking about my dramas thank you for uh, sharing us so Tira, like i'm really curious okay it's really really like I've been thinking about it and questioning myself whether I should ask you this or not. Okay. But, <laughs> like, you use the word coming out a lot when you describe your book. Okay. So, yes, does yes, it yes. have to do anything with your sexuality? Like, you coming out from being open and, like, your family accepting you or... Um, <clears throat> actually, yeah. That is one of the most common questions asked to me in any kind of meet with uh, my readers and even my relatives and families but and I get where you guys are coming from because my book afterwards it surrounds um, lots of the poems and bros surrounds LGBTQ and mm -hmm. me having uh, or the narrator having a crush on a girl but it does not necessarily have to do with my sexuality as a matter of fact, I think I am gender apathetic, but it does not have anything to do with me being gay or me being in love with a girl. I hope that clears things up. So this one's for everyone who's curious, yeah. even at the college, yeah. the Tso community. <laughs> Thank you, Tara, for the clarification. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for asking that question because I have been getting a lot of anonymous messages. Mm -hmm. Uh, where people are asking if I'm gay or if I am in love with a girl and it's so <laughs> weird to me it's just how your writing is yeah ah. that's a it's kind just of you style. beautifully described it so people mm. are mesmerized by your writing <laughs> and hey, they are just I curious hope so. So. <laughs> they're just curious like hey is this true since your writing is way too good <laughs> it's also because I admire the female mm -hmm. I admire women so much true, true. because I feel that we have this, we are so innately powerful and beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can't help but just write about no. us, like just admire them. I agree. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but that's true though, like, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, mis misgenderized things. It happens a lot when you tend to uh, appreciate way too much your yes, same sex. Yes, yes. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it happens. But, uh, but I also don't take it as an offense. I Like mm -hmm. I said, I think I'm quite apathetic towards uh -huh, uh -huh. that conception. So I'm like, okay with anything, whatever mm -hmm. you want to think. Speaking of your experiences, Mm -hmm. Your poem, it talks a lot about like um, your experiences that you have gone through yes, personally yes. as a human, you know, mm -hmm. like as a writer, you're not just, uh, you have not just imagined it or you did not get a motivation or inspiration, but it was something that you go to, you, you've gone yes, through yes, yes. and it's called an epilogue of your life. It, my life, yeah. Yes. My. So like, is there any particular experience that like really motivated you, that really pushed you forward to like make this into a book? Or like a person that really motivated you, encouraged you to make it into a book, to publish it? That's a very nice question. But I wish I was one of those very interesting people who go through stuff and they have so many stories to tell behind their doings. But I'm not that. It just happened. I was interested in writing since I was very young. Mm -hmm. I was writing and my sister, my sister, she is my biggest fan and she really wants, wanted me to publish a book but I never had any dream of being a writer or an author. I just write because I want to write and it's hard for me to communicate my feelings 
directly okay. while it's happening. So I have to go through it, take a while, and write it down. So I was doing the same thing, collecting poem, poems, uh, and when I was 14 years old, class 9, I started collecting all these poetries and arranging them in one file. Mm -hmm. And last year, I was in hostel, uh, and it was my it's my first time staying in hostel, so it was really hard for me. I was trying to adjust with everyone and stuff. And one night, one morning, actually, it was around 2 or 3 a.m., I was uh, just scrolling through my phone and I, I saw the file where I collected my poems oh. and I was like, mm, why don't we just send it to a publishing house? It, they don't have to publish it. Mm -hmm. And I emailed them my manuscript uh -huh. and then it, I didn't get reply for a few weeks and I was like, it's okay, I, I don't want to be a writer anyway. <laughs> but then, <laughs> uh, luckily for me, uh, they sent uh, an email saying mm -hmm. that they were working on my manuscript and would love to have a meeting with me as soon as I was free. Mm -hmm. So it just happened like that. Like no big motivations or nothing that really boosted me. Just uh -huh. congratulations. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> well, uh, so like, what does your book? Does it have a particular peers that you uh, aim to, you know, aim yes, to convey your message yes. to? Uh, the book is a coming out of a coming of age poetry book. Mm -hmm. In a sense that um, I, it was all the poems, all the contents of the book were written when I was teenagers, mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. So I want to share my experience to teenagers because I can't tell an adult how to go up with life mm -hmm. or I can't it doesn't happen because I haven't been an adult for long just turned 20 so but I can tell the uh, the teenagers the current teenagers like what I went through and because when we are in teenagers we are really rebellious mm -hmm. and we feel lonely the, it feels like the whole world is against you for no reason and you don't like your parents when you're a teenager because you want to have fun mm -hmm. and they the don't allow stage. you to have fun, yeah. So, and then you are also, uh, you also go through stages of friendship mm -hmm. and then you meet different kinds of people mm -hmm. and then you have different kinds of grief you face for the first time. So it was really new to me being a teenager and it was hard for me to be a teenager uh. and I lost so many friends when I was in high school but I also gained so many friends mm -hmm. again so I and I learned I had many online friends mm -hmm. who were going through similar experiences mm -hmm. so and Ironically, we go through the same thing, but we feel like we are the only one going to the f mm. through it. So I want to, through this book, I want to convey the, a message to the to teenagers that you are not alone. You can reach out to people, you can reach out to your friends. Everyone is going through something. You may not be able to relate to it uh, very deeply, but you will relate to it and you can find friendship. Your friendship will grow stronger. and stuff like that so yeah I think I speak too much anyway my my target audience is um, teenage teenager yeah. okay if you want to see a glimpse of um, Tara Lee and her friendship uh, there it's a YouTube channel do you have a YouTube channel everyone I you can see it. you can see how 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 vast and how diverse her friend group is <laughs> I actually do have a YouTube channel. It's called Terra Lee Rebecca, and I don't really maintain it. I'm just archiving my memories. Memories, yes. But it's really beautiful. I follow our subscriber here. <laughs> <laughs> subscriber here. Because um, the beauty of your YouTube channel is that, like, a college student, you you are like uh, your content so far is college life. Yes, yes. A typical college student. We know what a college student is because I myself I'm a college student yeah. but to see the side of a college student from your perspective it was really beautiful like no words 
no comments. <laughs> I was taken aback that, oh, can I live that kind of life as a college student? <laughs> I mean, when I look at that, it all seems, you guys seem all cheerful. There's like, as if you guys don't have the academic pressure, <laughs> always waiting for the free coffee. <laughs> Call oh me next God. time, <laughs> I'll join you. <laughs> Call me in, you have my number, so anytime, okay? Later. <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much for being here with us here today, thank Tara. You for like, having me. It really means a lot because it was not just me who was curious about you. We got uh, viewers and feedbacks who were like, you know, pushing for our pushing, and we're very eager, looking forward to you thank being you. our guest here, and you coming here is our wildest dream coming true. Thank you. So I hope and believe that the viewers and the listeners are like, you. We have like you know cleared your curiosity about her. And you have learned more as, mar uh, as much as I have about the linguistic department and her the life story of Terali Rebecca and <clears throat> is there any no chance one. <laughs> <clears throat> is there any chance we have this part two or <laughs> this part two or if you if you are yeah yeah if you are a member of the Tetsu community or looking forward to get a copy of her uh, afterward copy the book. It's available at the Tetsu store. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we will uh, show you the glimpse of uh, what Tetsu store is. It's at the reception uh, opposite to the Tetsu cafe, so you guys can check it out. It's just 300 rupees only. 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 So, yeah, any chance part two uh, interval? <laughs> Maybe an interval? Maybe if I uh, get dramatized in college, you will. <laughs> After graduation. Yeah. Afterwards, part two. <laughs> okay, so we'll be looking forward to that part two. Yeah. Thank you very much once yeah. again for being Thank here you for with us. Me. Well, that's all. Congratulations. <laughs> See you guys uh, next episode where we will be with a very interesting student. Yeah, I can give you a glimpse saying it's a gold medalist and a very talented student from the BSW, Bachelors of Social Work. So yeah, stay tuned and catch up with us for the next episodes. Thank you. Bye.